have a vision that you don't understand and even people don't understand it must be plain many young people they've heard the message of uh, mentors of destiny uh, past and so they are running around every time looking for begging in the name of looking for By the grace of God, this month, the month of April, is our month of operating in the supernatural. And since the beginning of the month, we've been learning, praying, and trusting God to make us operate in the supernatural naturally. That is, you don't struggle to operate in the supernatural. To operate in supernatural, not that you will come and do some magic in order to operate in the supernatural. You are living your life naturally, but it's supernatural. Because it's ordained by God, it's directed by God, there are things you will be doing. At the time you are doing it, you don't even understand. But in the final analysis, you will begin to see the hand of God on it that it is supernatural. But as a child of God, for you to operate in the supernatural, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit in different dimensions. We are going to share today some of the dimensions. But we are going to focus on Holy Ghost baptism. And so the topic for the message this morning is Holy Ghost baptism. Basically, we all know that the Holy Spirit is a divine personality. The Holy Spirit is a person. It's not a thing. It's a person and he has characteristics or attributes that only human beings can have. If you look at the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 10 to 13, you will see that the Holy Spirit has intelligence. If you look at the Bible in Ephesians 4, 30, you will see the Holy Spirit has feelings. So if you hurt his feelings and it's inside of you, what will he do? He will quietly leave you. We see that the Holy Spirit has a will. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, we see that the Holy Spirit prays. It enables you to pray. In Romans chapter 8, verse 20, verse 39, we see that the Holy Spirit can be lied to. You can lie to the Holy Spirit as you can lie to a person. As Ananias and Sapphira did in Acts of Apostles chapter 5, Verse 3. The Holy Spirit can be insulted, as we see in Hebrews 10 29. And the Holy Spirit teaches and directs. So, all these characteristics are characteristics that only human beings can have. And that is why we say the Holy Spirit is a divine personality, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of god is the spirit of truth is the spirit of the living god the holy spirit is the spirit of christ the holy spirit is the spirit of holiness is the spirit of life 
It is the spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is the comforter, the eternal life. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 tells us, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God, so you remember we said the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God dwelleth where? In you. So the Spirit of God dwells inside you. I want you to understand this this morning. It's very important. And if you understand it this morning, it can change your life completely. You know, this scripture is personally very important to me. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. And the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. You know, when I gave my life to Jesus in 1993, I'm sure you know where I come from. I come from Delta State. And there's one thing they call Sapele water. Everybody in my place, you must drink Ogogoro. In fact, a woman with a young child, if you go somewhere, you know, in our, our people have dignity and self-pride. If you go to even a rich man's house, if he's eating, he say, come eat. Even when you're hungry, you say, no, I don't eat for house. But he will give you ogogoro. And even if you are a woman, you are carrying a baby, and he gives you ogogoro, you will put your hand inside the ogogoro I use it to rub the baby's tongue so that the baby will drink. And fortunately or unfortunately for me, my mother sold Ogogoro. So as a young child, when you sell for a person, you go first uh, test her. <laughs> you know. So, when I gave my life to Jesus, it was clear to me that, and you know, it's not, longer, it's not like this time that you know, everybody is born again. If you are born again, in fact, the people who will be worrying you are other people. If you say you are a girl and you are born again, you enter house with boy, they're going to wait for you. When you come, I say, you, how do you say you be gone again? Where do they enter the house with this boy they do? So, when I gave my life to Jesus, I knew that it will not be good to still continue drinking uh, alcohol. So, I stopped drinking it publicly. But inside my room, I know some of you are still in this level. That's why I'm doing this story. Inside my room, there is a bottle. And I was a pharmacist, so you can't even drink to go to work. You can't give somebody injection and your mouth is smelling uh, alcohol. So when I close from work, then in the church one day, somebody read the scripture. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. The person did not mention alcohol. But the scripture convicted me that if my body is the temple of God, obviously he cannot accept uh, alcohol. It was from that day that I stopped taking alcohol. So you can see how the Holy Spirit can convict someone. Because the Holy Spirit is eternal. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. That is everywhere. That's one of the ways that the, the, God is bigger than the devil. The devil can enter into a human being, go to one place and destroy people. 
But the devil cannot be everywhere at every time. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. That is all powerful. The devil has power. But power pass power. Because the Holy Spirit is all powerful. And the Holy Spirit is omniscient. Is omniscient. That is, is all knowing. That is why you cannot pretend before God. Even as you are here, what you are thinking about this message, God knows. The Holy Spirit knows. So he's all knowing. And the Holy Spirit is holy. You know, if you go to Khan, for it's a Christian association of Nigeria, there is different categorization of Christians. There is Catholics. There is uh, African traditional churches. You know, the Aladura, the Sele, and all of that. There are evangelicals, the mainline churches. But there is a category called Pentecostals. There are two key things. And which category do we belong? Pentecostals. Pentecostals okay. There are two key things that distinguish those who are called Pentecostals. Number one is oppression in the supernatural. And number two is Holy Ghost baptism. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. So if you are a true Pentecostal, you should have Holy Ghost baptism. But before we go to Holy Ghost baptism, let's look at the usefulness of the Holy Spirit. You know, the usefulness. Why is the Holy Spirit necessary for a Christian? When we give our life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit takes permanent residence. Somebody say residence. There are two words that I want you to go with about Holy Spirit. And there are two levels. One, when you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and what? Indwells. It will dwell inside of you. It's residence in you. And when the Holy Spirit is residence in you, it helps you. Where we read John chapter, no, not where we read, John chapter 14, verse 17. John chapter 14, verse 17. John chapter 14, verse 17. The Bible says, even the spirit of truth. You remember our description of the Holy Spirit? That is the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Because he sees him. He didn't say he sees it. He sees eh, him. Because he's a person. He has feelings. Neither knoweth him. But ye know him. Hello? So the first important thing is that, do you know him? He said, ye know him. For what? He dwelleth with you. And shall be where? In you. So the first thing is that, if you have truly given your life to Jesus, and you are born again, the Holy Spirit dwells where? In you. He dwells in you. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. And when the Holy Spirit is with you, is very useful in your life. In fact, no Christian can live a triumphant Christian life without the power of the Holy Spirit. And there are several ways by which the Holy Spirit can be useful to a believer. Number one is that you will be adopted into God's family. 
as we can see in Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Number two, it will help and give you victory in every temptation. When you have temptation, the Holy Spirit will give you victory. Number three, it helps you in prayer. The Holy Spirit is a person. He helps in prayer. Number four, it fills the believer with joy, peace, and boldness. So if you are a believer and you have the Holy Spirit in you and things around you appear to be going bad because of the Holy Spirit in you and people cannot understand it, you will have joy, peace, and boldness. Number five is that the Holy Spirit sanctifies. You can't be living in sin comfortably when the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. The Holy Spirit quickens and heals our body. That's why you see there are times when a call is made for people who are sealed, some are healed and some are not healed. The Holy, when the Holy Spirit is inside you, it will quicken healing of your body. The Holy Spirit comforts, cancels, and commands. If you are bereaved, you are hurting, the Holy Spirit will comfort you. In fact, there are many people, they think that um, if certain thing happens to them, they will die. Am I communicating? Yes. That they will not be able to bear it. But when it happens, the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, it will comfort and counsel you. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. What you don't know, it will help to intercede for you. The Holy Spirit illuminates and inspires it will open your eye to see things that you don't know. The Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit teaches. It guides into all truth. The Holy Spirit creates. It empowers. It directs gospel work. It confirms the gospel. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will see things that human eyes cannot see. You know, last week, Sunday, after service, I went to Benin. Throughout the night, I was fighting with armed robbers. So when I woke up in the morning, the first thing I did, I prayed. And then I sent text message to mommy, and to evangelist uh, Jegede. I, I, just, I didn't tell them what happened. I said, just pray against uh, arm robbers. The following morning, I went to a workshop. The workshop started around 9 o'clock. Then one lady came around 12. She said, why are you just coming to workshop and started? She said, what do you do? We are attacked by... Nothing happened to them. I didn't tell her, I was just smiling. Even up to today, I didn't tell her anything. So, the whole, even people who are close to you, people who are connected to you, the Holy Spirit will reveal things about them, will intercede for them, and will protect them. So, a Christian cannot live a triumphant life without the Holy Spirit. When you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit becomes what? Resident. Becomes what? Resident in your life. But Holy Ghost baptism, the Holy Spirit will become the president of your life. Do you see the two now? One is when you give your life 
the Holy Spirit indwells you. It becomes the resident of your life. But when you have Holy Ghost baptism, it becomes the president of your life. Because Holy Ghost baptism is endowment of power from on high. When you have Holy Ghost baptism, you receive power from God. And you know, even before Jesus Christ came, when John the Baptist was preparing the way, he told them that Jesus Christ is coming. Why am I going into all these details? You need to know that Holy Ghost baptism is biblical. Because there are some people who profess to be Christians and they say there is no need for Holy Ghost uh, baptism. But if you look at the Bible, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. This was uh, um, John the Baptist speaking. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoe I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with what? With the Holy Ghost. And with fire. So, even before Jesus Christ came, John, while preparing the way, told us that when Jesus Christ comes, he will baptize us with the Holy Ghost. And you all know the story. Jesus Christ came, he died, he went back to heaven. But before he went, he told the disciples, Acts of Apostle chapter 1 verse 8. Acts of Apostle chapter 1 verse 8. He says, But ye shall do what? Can we read it together? But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. So from this scripture is clear. That there are some evidences that follows Holy Ghost baptism. Number one is that you will receive power. And that power is for the supernatural. When you receive Holy Ghost baptism, you receive power for the supernatural. To do things that naturally man cannot be able to do. The second thing is that you receive power to witness. You can be a Pentecostal Christian, Holy Ghost baptized, tongue blasting, and you don't witness for Jesus. When you receive Holy Ghost baptism, you must be a witness. You must be a witness. Every day you will be struggling, getting tracks. You will be going about. As you, are, as you are going about your normal duty, you are giving tracks to people. You are telling them, look, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to come and experience the power of God in your life. You cannot be a Holy Ghost filled Christian and you don't witness. The third thing is speaking in tongues, that is the sign, the evidence of Holy Ghost baptism. Let's look at Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Who will this sign follow? Ask your neighbor, are you a believer? Everyone, he didn't say these signs shall follow the apostles. He didn't say these signs shall follow the pastors. He said these signs shall follow them that were that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall do all speak with new tongues. So the Holy Ghost baptism 
is expected for everybody. Speaking in tongue is for all of them that will believe. So if you are a believer, you are expected to speak in tongues. But we know that it's not everybody who comes to the church that speaks in tongues. And we also know that there are some places where they teach people how to speak in tongues. And we also know that some people, when they see other people speaking in tongues to belong, they say, Kata masi kayawa. you know, they will just say anything. Am I communicating? So that they will, at least the other people will not be looking them at them as people who are lower spiritually. You know, I'm explaining all of this because I come from a background where in the church I was attending before, the hierarchy of the church did not sanction speaking in tongues. And if you look at the history of Christianity, speaking in tongues in the Bible started in Acts of Apostles chapter 2. And if you look at it historically, that is around after the death of Christ, 110 A.D. But if you look at the first church, the Catholic church, they don't speak in tongues in Catholic church. For many centuries in the church, they were not speaking in tongues. Until in 1901, in America, at the social revival. All of a study, not that they planned it. Just like it happened in Pentecost. All of a study, people started speaking in uh, tongues. And right from there, a new revival started. That is why I always tell people that about the scripture, there is progressive revelation. It's not that those Christians who were Christians from AD 110 to 1906 or 01. It started from 01. You know? The, all those people about 18 centuries, it's not that they were not Christians. But since that revival started, God has been you know, if you go to the book of Joel, it tells us that the time is coming where I will pour my spirit. So it's a fulfillment of scriptures that people are speaking into. I was telling you that I come from a background. I was the coordinator of the church at that time. At that time, I had not been ordained as a pastor, but I was coordinator of the church. And then when we are having program, people will be speaking in tongues. The senior pastor will come and call me, say, Brother TV, go and stop them. You know? And even me, at the beginning, I wasn't speaking in tongues. And you know, when they suppress a thing like that, many people do not experience it. But you know, God is wonderful. And when God wants to teach you something, he does it in a spectacular way. The first day I spoke in tongue was inside my room. I was praying, and God just released my tongues. Amen? Amen. Today, God is going to release some tongues. Amen. So what am I saying? Don't pretend. Don't imitate. God is a wonderful God. It is the spirit that gives a utterance. That gives utterance. But there are conditions. So before we pray, let me tell you the four conditions for receiving Holy Ghost baptism. Number one is test. Test. You must have a strong desire. You must have a strong desire. You want to receive the baptism. You want God to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. So you have a strong desire. Say, God, I want it. Then you will have it. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3. Isaiah 44 verse 3. 
Isaiah 44 verse 3. The Bible says, For I will pour water on the thirsty land, and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring, and my blessing on your descendants. So, what is required is for you to be thirsty, to desire Holy Ghost baptism. That is number one. Number two is that you must have a new heart, a soft heart, a circumcised heart. Please check your neighbor. Nobody should be sleeping no, at this time. You must have a heart that is ready to do what? To receive. Ezekiel chapter 36. From verse 26 to 27. The Bible says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So you need a new heart. Many people, even when you are ministering, you know, you won't understand unless you have ministered. Before you come, self, they are struggling with you. You know, there are some people who say, hey, they come, they make contact with everybody for, but me, I don't fall. <laughs> who is looking for you to fall? <laughs> you receive Holy Ghost. You must have the heart that this Holy Spirit, I will receive it today. And if you have that receptive heart, not heart of stone, then God will give it to you. Number three is faith. You must believe in Holy Ghost baptism and that God can make you to receive it. So you must believe. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. It says, I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Holy Ghost, uh, the Spirit, by the works of the law? Or by believing what you heard? So, it's by believing what you have heard that you receive it. Not from works. So, you must have faith to be able to receive. And then finally, finally, you must pray to receive it. So, this morning we are going to pray to receive it you must pray to receive it 11 luke chapter 11 verse 13 luke chapter 11 verse 13 the bible says if then though you are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give the holy spirit to who to those who ask. You give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. So my dear brothers and sisters, there are too many issues this morning. The first is that you need the Holy Spirit to become resident in your life. And the only way to do that is to give your life to Jesus. Because when you give your life to Jesus, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, It's no longer I who live, but Christ liveth in me. The second thing is to make the Holy Spirit become president of your life. And when he becomes president of your life, you have Holy Ghost baptism manifesting in speaking in tongues. And everywhere you go, you know go to fear. Because you know you are directed by what? by the Holy Spirit.
And even people don't understand. It must be plain. Many young people have heard the message of uh, mentors, of destiny, their past. 